Hello everyone, I'm Tapti Pandit from Stony Brook University and today I'll present our talk on DIN PTA, Combining Static and Dynamic Analysis for Practical Selective Data Protection. This work was done in collaboration with my colleague Zareen Firoz Moon, my advisor Michalis Polikronakis at Stony Brook University and by Fabian Monroes at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. As defenses against control hijacking attacks become more widely deployed, attackers are turning their attention to data-only attacks. Leaking process data using data-only attacks can pose a significant security threat, for example, by exfiltrating secret server keys or private user information. Moreover, the recent spate of transient execution attacks have shown that sensitive process data is not safe from leakage if it is in main memory. Modern processors support speculative execution to improve performance. So an attacker can speculatively bend the control flow to load sensitive data into the cache from where it can be leaked by Spectre style attacks. Modern processors also have load store queues that help with out of order execution. Data speculatively loaded into these queues can also be exfiltrated using transient execution attacks such as zombie load attack. One might think that storing sensitive data in a trusted execution environment such as the Intel SGX enclave would prevent it from being leaked. Unfortunately, Attacks such as Foreshadow and SGX Spectre have shown this to not be the case. Similarly, user space memory isolation techniques such as Intel PKRU are also vulnerable to meltdown style transient execution attacks. And finally, of course, data in DRAM can be leaked by data leakage attacks such as the heartbeat vulnerability that affected the OpenSSL libraries. To offer strong protection against these attacks, we present a technique where sensitive data can always be kept encrypted in the memory and hardware caches and also in the hardware queues. It is decrypted only when it is loaded into CPU registers. To do this, we use hardware supported AES encryption. Modern processors such as Intel and AMD provide hardware instructions that perform AES in encryption and decryption operations entirely in the CPU. This ensures that our system, in our system, the AES operations are performed completely in the CPU and no intermediate state is leaked to memory or caches. This ensures that leaking memory from, uh, leaking data from the memory or even speculatively, will leak only the encrypted values and the uh, plain text value remains confidential. In order to protect sensitive data with this encryption scheme, first, all memory operations that involve the sensitive data must be identified. And then, these memory operations must be instrumented with the encryption and decryption logic. Thus, we need to find a principled and sound way to automatically instrument software with these differences. In general, there are two ways to analyze a program in order to identify which memory operations must be transformed. These are static analysis, which is sound but imprecise. What this means is that it can identify all memory operations that must be transformed, but the results are an over approximation. Consider this data flow graph. In addition to the actual data flows, a static analysis will also identify some extra uh, data flows. On the other hand, dynamic analysis, for example, by training, with, uh, training the application with specific inputs, provides a precise result, but uh, it is not sound. In case of this, uh, this current example, it misses some of the data flows that are possible. 
In DIN PTA, we combine both static analysis with dynamic analysis. Static analysis ensures that all code is covered and dynamic analysis is used to elide expensive instrumentation. Thus, by using DIN PTA, we can protect sensitive data using encryption with a reasonable overhead. So this is the outline of my talk. First, I'll talk about the static analysis, then I'll speak about the dynamic flow tracking, and finally, I'll present our evaluation results. Uh, consider this simple example inspired by the OpenSSL code base. The programmer here annotates the private key as sensitive. Then our analysis can automatically find all pointers that point to the private key. For this purpose, we use the static analysis technique of pointer analysis. We use Steensgard's algorithm, which is the fastest pointer analysis algorithm and has linear complexity. Using pointer analysis, we can identify that both pointers PTR and QTR may point to the private key. After resolving which pointers can point to sensitive data, we statically compute which value flows in the program are sensitive. This includes both direct and indirect values. During our static analysis stage, our results will still have some imprecision, and using these results directly uh, to instrument the program will lead to unnecessary memory encryption and decryption operations. For example, in this case, even though the value flow, only the value flow from private key to D is sensitive, in reality, the static analysis concludes that the private key can flow to both variable A and D. Because static analysis is imprecise, it leads to unnecessary memory encryption operation as shown in this figure. So we use dynamic flow tracking to address this challenge. Dynamic flow tracking is a form of dynamic analysis that enables precise tracking of data flows. In dynamic data flow tracking, the process memory has a shadow memory and every memory location has an associated label. However, if we want to use dynamic data flow tracking soundly, we would have to transform every memory operation to propagate and combine labels. Label propagation in itself is cheap, but instrumenting every memory operation increases the overhead. Our solution to this dilemma is to combine dynamic and static analysis. Then VTA assigns a sensitive DFT label to any objects that the programmer annotates as sensitive. Then it uses static analysis to identify potentially sensitive memory operation. This set of memory operations might have some over approximations. And finally, it elides expensive encryption or decryption operations based on the DFT label lookups. So let's look at how all of this works together. In this example, the pointer PTR uh, P key, P key is used to point to a buffer to store the private key. This buffer is annotated as sensitive. Therefore, the shadow memory associated with this buffer uh, the sensitive label is stored. The pointer PTR first points to P key and the value A is written to it. Then PTR is changed to point to another buffer and the value B is written to it. Using static analysis, we identify all memory operations that might operate on the sensitive data. For example, in this case, both memory writes that store A and B are derived to potentially point to the sensitive private key. The memory operations identified by static analysis are then instrumented to include a DFT label lookup. We first check if the memory object pointed to by PTR is sensitive of not, or not. Only if it is sensitive, the expensive encrypt operation is performed. 
So in case of the first memory store operation, the label lookup indicates that the buffer pointed to by PTR has a sensitive label and therefore it must be encrypted. However, in case of the second memory store operation, the label lookup indicates that the buffer pointed to by PTR does not have a sensitive label and therefore the expensive AES encryption can be skipped. So in this way, we use the cheap label lookups instead of expensive cryptographic operations. In summary, if we only use the over approximated memory operations identified by the imprecise static analysis, Many memory operations must unnecessarily undergo encryption and decryption. However, using DFT label lookups, these over approximated memory operations simply undergo a lightweight label lookup and only the memory operations really operating on sensitive data undergo the expensive cryptographic transformations. In this way, Runtime label lookups dramatically reduce the number of ex expensive cryptographic uh, transformations that are executed. Finally, sensitive values can also be copied from one object to another. To track these sensitive value flows, we first use static analysis to identify them and then apply the DFT label propagation logic on only these value flows. This reduces the number of memory operations that must be instrumented with the DFT propagation logic. For example, in case of the in case of this function BN copy from the OpenSSL code base, uh, that uh, this function is used to copy both uh, the private SSL key that is marked as sensitive and the public SSL key that isn't sensitive. Static analysis identifies both value flows as potentially sensitive and instruments the operations involved with the DFT propagation logic. At runtime, the sensitive label propagates only along the actual sensitive value flow. We also use additional techniques to improve the precision of our analysis. For example, we model some parts of uh, the code in a context-sensitive manner. The details of this is further explained in the paper and we encourage those who are interested to read it. Uh, we evaluate uh, our system uh, with eight popular applications. Uh, in each of these applications, we annotate the sensitive data such as private keys and passwords as sensitive. Then we harden these applications using DIMPTA. By combining static and dynamic analysis, we can protect sensitive data in these applications with a limited overhead. And this overhead is 19% in case of Nginx, 6% in case of HTTPD, and 6.5% in case of Lighty. We also recorded the percentage of memory operations that underwent DFT label lookups and AES transformations. We observed that across all applications, very few memory operations required expensive AES transformations. Finally, we evaluated how DIMPTA's runtime overhead changes as the percentage of data labeled sensitive changes. For this, we use two microbenchmarks. A microbenchmark that computes the largest number among a list of arrays and another microbenchmark that performs merge sort on a list of arrays. The percentage of arrays annotated as sensitive is changed slowly and the overhead is measured. In both of these graphs, the flat line uh, represents the overhead. If we use static analysis alone, that is we don't use any DF scope DFT. As we see here, the benefits of DIMPTA diminishes when the majority of the data is marked as sensitive. As the percentage of sensitive data increases beyond 60 to 70%. This is because as the percentage of sensitive data increases, more and more operations require DFT label lookups as well as the expensive AES transformations. 
Thus, in conclusion, DIN-PT, a combined static and dynamic analysis to provide a practical defense against data leakage attacks. It uses a scope form of data flow tracking to ameliorate the over-approximation inherent with static analysis. And thus, DIN-PTA can ensure the confidentiality of sensitive data with a modest overhead. Uh, the source code of DIN-PTA is available at, the, uh, at this link. And feel free to contact me with any follow-up questions or comments. Thank you.